This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. If your stress is a mess, you definitely need to listen to this show. This is Johanna Carroll. The name of our show is Dialogue with Divinity. And I'm so happy today to have what I call, who I call the rock star of recovery, Lucinda Bassett. She's a preeminent spokesperson for the management and wellness techniques of life and overcoming anxiety and depression. She is the author of the national bestseller, From Panic to Power, where she provides an intimate first-person account of her own personal struggle and triumph over anxiety and depression. So, Lucinda, welcome. It's so nice to have you on our show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Johanna. It's a pleasure to be here. So, you know, the old spiritual adage, heal or heal thyself. So, obviously, there's an aspect of you as a wonderful author of many books and working with millions of people around the world that you had to come to a place that you did have to heal an aspect of anxiety for yourself. Can you share a little bit about that with our audience? Sure. Um, so I'm at the ripe young age of 60 now, which is hard to believe. <laughs> but um, <laughs> when I was in my uh, early 20s, I had severe panic attacks and anxiety and and it turned into agoraphobia, which means that you end up avoiding things such as flying or driving or socializing because your anxiety becomes so overwhelming that you become afraid that you're going to have that anxiety out in public and that you're going to embarrass yourself. So I became pretty um, agoraphobic, and as a result, flying was difficult. Um, I couldn't drive more than three miles from my home. Um, I began to think that I was going crazy and losing my mind, which is very common. And I really struggled silently because I just didn't want anyone to know that I had uh, these hidden fears. I mean, simple things like taking a bus or, you know, if you were on a tour or um, getting on a boat, you know, that didn't have a bathroom. <laughs> um, yep. So it really controls your life. Yeah, yeah. So how long did this actually, I mean, I want to say paralyze you on some level. How long did you experience this? Well, it started manifesting when I was about 15 and lasted until I was about 25, so 10 years. And so your way out of this? Well, that's another, that's another, another two shows. But in brief, <laughs> um, I started reading books by this woman named Claire Weeks. And she was, I, you got to, I have to apologize. My power just went out today. So all of a sudden there's all this craziness, but I just wanted to share that with you. It's giving me a little bit of anxiety, but if you hear noises, that's what it's about. But okay, anyway, um, no problem. so yeah, so, so I went through um, um, a self-help, a self-help regimen. I ended up going out and there wasn't much out there um, when I had anxiety and panic disorder. And I remember going to a psychiatrist and trying to describe what I was experiencing and he just ended up putting me in a group, and he said, well, there's not a lot we can do for that, and tried to put me on an antidepressant, which made me substantially worse. And then one day I was watching um, Oprah, and there was a woman on talking about anxiety and panic disorder, and I thought, oh, my gosh, that's me, very much like we're doing today. And I, I self-diagnosed my condition, and I went out searching for help and answers. And there really wasn't a lot out there, you know, 20 years ago. And so I started this long road to recovery. And it, it really involved um, changing the way that I chose to be affected by what's going on in my life around me, mm, and being okay. less of a less of a reactor and more proactive in my life. And right. learning how to talk to myself in a way that's a, a you know, more calming, and mm -hmm. uh, that, that led to this program that I created that, that's helped over a million people with anxiety and depression. So I know that um, in metaphysics, I always refer to this now as the age of ascension, and you refer to it as the age of anxiety. Can you talk about that a little bit, please? 
Well, there's so much challenge and change going on in the world right now. And it's always been there from the time of Hitler. I was talking to a friend about this because, you know, 9-11 was not so far away. And um, mm -hmm. I think, though, what we're seeing is the millennials, people 30 and under, are really, really struggling with anxiety. And there's so much pressure and there's so much stimulation. And every I mean, in, in our generation, there weren't cell phones. You know, I hate to admit it, but it's the way it was. And now there's computers and laptops and cell phones and apps for everything. And so you have this generation of overachievers. Everybody wants, you know, to be, own their own company and be CEOs before they're 30. And they're all drinking coffee at the local coffee shop. So they're overstimulated. Um, they're overachievers. There's tons of pressure on themselves, their spouses, their families to mm -hmm. perform. And it's there's more anxiety now than there's been in years of the use of uh, anti-anxiety medication and, and antidepressant medication and suicide, all of those, the use of the abuse of alcohol um, has ris risen substantially in the last 10 years. And you'd think it'd be the opposite. You think right, Lucinda, be, you, you know, know we're going to hold that thought this. for a moment. We're going to take a really quick break because when we come back, I want to continue that dialogue and that conversation and talk about what is anxiety and you know, how do I identify it? And not only do I, how do I identify it, but once I've identified it, what do I do with it? We'll be right back. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at www.drgibbswilliams.com. Shamanism is recognized as a method to access the quantum level. Mastery of shamanic skills puts spiritual information and healing power into your hands. Path Home Shamanic Art School, a bonded Colorado certified occupational school, has met rigorous state standards ensuring its director and instructors have the qualifications to teach the shamanic arts. Path Home offers a certification program in blocks of study. Block 1, a five-day intensive, will be held in the beautiful mountain town of Coldale, Colorado, October 13th through 18th. Registration deadline is September 12th. 
Experience Journey Trance, Power Animals, Helping Spirits, Sacred Space, and Life Purpose. Come discover your power. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, in the magical world of shamanism. Call 303-775-3431 or visit findyourpathhome.com. Welcome back, everybody. And so we were speaking today with Lucinda Bassett, my rock star of recovery around anxiety and stress. And so, Lucinda, we were talking about the millennials before. It's an interesting generation looking at them. They do have an awful lot of pressure and they do have a lot of stress. And I'm wondering, is it systemically created or is it just the world of large? Right. You know, what is anxiety for this new generation? Well, I think, first of all, anxiety is a genetic disorder. So the predisposition for anxiety and depression is usually you can look back and see that you had a father or mother um, that has issues with anxiety. And so it's not uncommon at all for it to be a genetic disorder. And then, of course, there's a biochemical component. So if you're someone who is easily stimulated or, you know, uh, there's so many different issues that can be involved. But if you're someone who's drinking a lot of caffeine, if you're drinking, and that's, this is another thing we're seeing with this generation, they're self-medicating, believe it or not, with alcohol and prescription medication. So this generation, even though they're extremely health-oriented, they're also very, um, you know, they're very prone to self-medicate because they're so overwhelmed and they're so stressed out that they can't cope. And rather than go to a doctor, they'll go to the, you know, they get together for cocktails after work, and then they get together for wine with dinner, and then they have cocktails after dinner. And, it, and it's a really un, unhealthy mix because um, they seem to have a lot of pride, this particular generation, and they're, they're overworked, and they're, uh, they, they are uh, unwilling to go for help. Our generation is a little more willing to go for help. This particular generation isn't. And they tend to want to think they, like they're eating organic food and out there exercising like crazy, but right. then they're filling themselves with, unfortunately, caffeine and alcohol. Why do you think there's this predisposition to not seeking help? What we're finding in this millennial generation is that um, a lot of, I, I would say, and I, I kind of want to say it's, it's more about the kind of the, the higher educated, the well-educated 30-year-olds, 26-year-olds, and they're out there competing for there's so much competition in the world. Um, you go out to get a job now if you're 25, 26 years old, and there's, it's not uncommon for there to be you're up against you know, 30 people for one job, and you go through 10 interviews. Very, very highly competitive world. And so I think a lot of it is ju- they're just afraid that somewhere down the road this is, it's going to hurt them. It's going to make them look weak. They're going to look like they, you know, uh, they've seen a therapist or they've gotten help or they're dependent on a medication. And and so they're just very private, um, and they're less they're they're more reluctant to, to seek help. They they, as I said, it's just a generation of uh, a strong need to to be in control and to have this perception of being in control. It's really funny if you go to these meetings with some of these people. I do a lot of seminars for for people with anxiety and depression and stress, and they that this generation tends to put on a persona that no matter what happens, they're always calm, always together, always got everything handled. And you and I both know no one, no one has that, that kind of life. We all have stress. We all, you know, I want to share something with you. First of all, I remember my, one of my father's favorite saying is, you know, your mother's not happy unless she's worrying about something. And I think that my mother was a worrier, but I never saw a lot of anxiety. You know, I never saw extreme behavior. So I think sort of, you know, we've evolved from, um, worrying to being actively concerned to being like overly stressed. Um, I was reading an article the other day that said the number one cause of stress for a lot of people is, is the workplace. And so, you know, are there unrealistic pressures that corporate America and just, you know, the world at large, the world of work at large is putting on society too many expectations? Well, I, I think that, uh, and if we go back to any generation, but it's so funny because our generation, I'm speaking of like, I'm 60. It, mm-hmm. it is the new 50. It's like, we can't even retire comfortably at 60 anymore. It's unfortunate that so many people can't afford to retire at 60, you know? Um, and, and it's, it's just, and 
you see all these 60 year olds out there working now, you know, where they used to retire 60, 65 years old. People aren't doing that. They're going back to work. They're reinventing themselves. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but um, the pressure to retire is different than it used to be. And people live bigger lives than they used to. You know, everybody's got two cars and three TVs and two computers. And, and there's this, there's this keeping up with the Joneses now because just for example, if you have a 25-year-old or a 23-year-old, go on Facebook. Everyone's Facebook, when they're 30 years old, shows them in Europe and in fancy cars and on great vacations. And, and so people look at that, and there's a perception that, oh, Mary Smith, who, went to, who graduated from college with me three years ago, is in, you know, Rome. <laughs> I should be in Rome. <laughs> so there's, there's this whole social media pressure that didn't exist when we were growing up or we were 20 right. that's now out there in such a big way that no matter what you do, you're not big enough. You're not successful enough. You don't have enough pictures on Facebook. You're not, you know, it's, there's Twitter, there's Instagram. There's, I mean, there's just all these ways of showing off and, you know, LinkedIn and the pressure to be somebody the pressure to be successful is huge for this generation, this this 30-somethings and under. And, it, and I think it's this also, but even, even for our generation, for many generations, I mean, right. I'm looking at people that, um, you know, are are retired and, and are traveling. And then there's this whole other part of the, you know, segment of our generation that's really not able to do that or someone in their 50s that would like to retire and, you know, they've got a you've got to commit for another 20 years or so. And even if they're not, you know, has social media itself added to the anxiety of creating unrealistic standards for all generations to live by? There's almost this sense of it's never enough. It's never enough. And of course, in the United States right now, we have the additional stress of politically what's going on. It's a very divisive energy in our society right now. So there's this real frenetic energy. I mean, I see it myself on the freeway, people rushing, people talking on cell phones, people not being present in the moment. So if you've got right. this constant state of anxiety, and yet there is, from my perspective, with all the phone calls that I've been receiving over the last 30 years, there still is a very quiet, private desire to move away from that and not to have stress be a mess and overwhelming their lives. So, you know, do you think it's a whole consciousness shift movement? What's really going on here? You know, I, unfortunately, I think that uh, stress, and I just loved everything you said. I mean, stress is an addiction. And I think what's happened in, in our particular, in the time that we're in 2016, we're so overstimulated that people are not, like you just said, in the moment, I do a seminar called In the Moment, and that's one of the biggest struggles that people have is learning how to be comfortable being alone or being in the moment or sitting in silence. Simple little things that our parents did pretty well. Uh, this generation and even our generation, we can't do it because we're not used to sitting in silence. We get on the computer or we turn the TV on. And as you just said so beautifully, you go into any restaurant, you sit around, everybody's on their cell phones. They can't even sit by themselves at a restaurant or sit at a table with their spouse, how many times you, you, you look over and you see a couple at a, at a table and they're both on their cell phones. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And so what we're doing is we're running, running, spinning, spinning, going to, you know, going to the gym or going to the coffee shop or going out to dinner or doing anything we can to keep ourselves busy because we're all scared to death to live in the moment. And, and this, this election is so um, disturbing for everyone. You know, that's the other thing. Right now, anything that happens in the world, before it's in our living room in a matter of seconds. It's like, um, and I'm not sure where your timing is going to be with this, but just Hillary Clinton falling down the other day. You know, I, I mean, everybody's talking about that. It's like everything that happens happens in a nanosecond, and you see it on your phone or your TV or your computer. Everything that's happening in the world, in Europe, uh, the terrorism, it's just so big because it's in front of us all the time. And I don't think anybody feels safe. And I, we're, we're all sitting back going, what's going to happen with this next election? What's it going to do to the economy? Who really can run this country? What's going on in Europe? Is it safe to travel? You know, you plan a vacation and there's a terrorist attack somewhere near where you want to go. And you just, you just, you know, you feel horrible for the people in Europe. You feel horrible for the people here. Um, there's just a, a, 
of uncertainty and insecurity in the world in general. And the truth is, it was always there to some degree, but it's bigger now, and we have access to it every minute of our lives. And people are addicted to stimulation. You know, when was the last time you saw someone who wasn't 80 years old sitting by themselves quietly and enjoying a park bench or lying in the sun in the park? Or You know, I'm just really enjoying the moment. People struggle. They come to me. I have to say, um, the most interesting demographic I've been working with in my coaching calls for anxiety is men in their 50s. Interesting. Why is that, do you think? Because I think that 50s happens to be the new 60s, and I think men in their 50s feel like they're in their 40s, and they're approaching retirement, and they're, they're scared, and, and men's identity is so wrapped up in their income and their job. And they're in their 50s thinking, what's next for me? You know, my father went off and retired and played golf, and my mom and dad rented a mobile home or a motor home and traveled around the world, whatever. You know, and these men in their 50s don't want to do that, you know? They're, they have more energy. They're taking supplements. There's some things that aren't so good for them, human growth hormone. I'm just seeing that, you know, men in their 50s are really struggling with what the next segment of their life is all about. They don't want to retire. They don't even know what retirement, they're afraid of retiring. You know, there's a great master who, um, it's a quote that I go back to all the time. See the beauty of the moment and let the future take care of itself. And, it, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, well, you know, I've got to pay the bills next week, that kind of thing. <laughs> but the reality is, I wonder right. if all of this goes back to sort of the, without sounding overly religious, the battle of the light and the dark of, you know, fear dragging everyone down by its heels when light has the ability as far as a term of, you know, consciousness to lift us up to a lighter and a happier place. But is the whole, it's, it kind of goes back to the concept of when is it enough? When is it enough? Because I think when, when we get to that place, when it is enough, we can relax a little, we can breathe a little, and maybe we're not saying, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to accomplish this, I need to have more, I need to have the bigger house, because it always fascinates me, and maybe it's because, you know, I'm in my 60s too, it's also that concept that when you're younger, you're acquiring, and you're building, and you're gathering, and, you know, you're trying to be successful and, and reach the top of the mountaintop, and then you get to a certain age where you're pretty tired of it all, and you say, okay, so now I'm going to dial it down I'm going to slow down and yet what I'm hearing you say is in terms of people that are coming to you the slowdown is not happening so there's going to be a burnout at some point in time however I also know that beyond the burnout you know there are solutions you obviously found them for yourself for me you know I jumped ship I left corporate America and devoted myself to a mission that's tremendous tremendously fulfilling and so the way we all handle stress, as you said. But I want to go back to the statement, it's biochemical. And I think that, you know, I really want to talk about the solutions to this biochemical addiction that seems to be extremely prevalent, not just in the United States, but the world at large. You know, there's like this big mm, push on everybody to hold us down. You know, is that, you know, intentional, how do we work with it on an individual basis? So one tool that I do want to give people that are listening right now is it's, and I'm sure Lucinda will support this in her solutions, is to take a look at what really belongs to you on a personal level that you really in the moment have to deal with. To take a look at what belongs mm -hmm. to the universe and the world that quite frankly, on some level, you really do not have control of and what belongs to someone else. And we will be right back. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exome Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exome Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. 
Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming, 24-7, 365. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. As host of Dialogue with Divinity, I am thrilled to join the Exxon Broadcast Network and their growing number of affiliates. My quest for a connection to the divine ignited my successful career path as an international spiritual counselor for over 40 years, an author of four books, and well-known metaphysical educator. My clients call me their spiritual mama. So my job is to offer you a radio show to help you grow spiritually with wisdom and get specific tools from guests who are experts in their field. Tune into Dialogue with Divinity and be part of the conversation with spirit. My goal, your happy soul. For more information, please visit my website at johannacarroll.com. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. and welcome back. We are here today with Lucinda Bassett, our expert and rock star of helping people with anxiety and depression. So before the break, we were talking about this whole concept of a a genetic deposition, you know, that this is really brain chemistry that we're talking about, and it's an addiction. And you think that it comes from 
genetics. So if you've got it programmed in your cells, Lucinda, there's got to be a way to deprogram it <laughs> with all this information and technology that we have today. In terms of the solution, okay, so we were talking about staying in the present moment, focusing on what belongs exclusively to me, letting the world on some level take care of itself. And if it is affecting me, how do I handle that? And stuff that belongs to other people, try not to have an emotional knee-jerk reaction about that. So what are the solutions you're offering, you know, your coaching and your seminars and all that? How are you really helping people? What advice can you give them today? Well, I think one of the most important things is, is if you feel you have a problem with anxiety or depression, you probably do. And the other thing is don't be afraid to reach out and get help for it because there is help. And medication for anxiety and depression, I'm not big on it, but it, if you're really struggling with depression, don't struggle. Medication can be very useful when it's used properly and you're working with a doctor. And, and it can be really, really useful when you're an obsessive worrier, an obsessive thinker. And, and if you're really struggling with you know, feeling down and, and unmotivated and, and feeling isolated and lonely. And so a huge piece of the puzzle is to recognize that you're struggling. So that's number one. And then number two, just, just kind of look around at your life and say, what am I doing that I'm not taking care of myself? Because one thing, Johanna, you, people know what they're doing. They know if they're drinking too much. They know if they're smoking cigarettes. They know if they're not working out. They know if they're a worrier or an overreactor. They know if they're not sleeping well. They know if they're drinking too much caffeine or if they're eating junk. And you might say, well, what's that have to do with it? Well, it has everything to do with it because when you talk about biochemical reactions in the body, so much of that is stimulated by what you put in your body. So if you're someone who's prone genetically, let's just say you had an anxious mother. Or let's say you had a mother, just like you said, my mother would say, well, I don't have anything to worry about. That worries me. Okay. Well, then yeah. you're probably genetically prone to, yeah, to worry. Or if you had a father who, you know, drank a lot of alcohol and took Valium, then your father probably managed his anxiety with medication and alcohol. So if you look at your family history and you say, you know what, my dad drank too much. My mom took, you know, uh, for a lot of the millennials, they'll look at their mothers and say, my, my mom took, you know, tranquilizers, my mom took Valium, whatever it was. So if you know that you have this predisposition toward anxiety and or depression or probably both, then that is your, you know, red flag to really take care of yourself. How do we do that? First and foremost, watch what you eat. Stay away from caffeine, at least cut down. And we're talking about Coke, coffee, iced tea, Excedrin has stimulants in it. Read the labels, you know. Really cut back on your alcohol intake because alcohol is a depressant. And right. it's going to make you feel crappy. It's really going to make you, if you're, if you're anxious, you're going to, you know, you know you have a drinking problem when you stop drinking and you're anxious. Because then that tells you you're using that alcohol as a way to sedate yourself when you're anxious. And a lot of people use alcohol in a social situation. And if you're drinking every day, you're probably drinking too much. If you think you have a drink, I would say, if you think you have a problem, if you're going, hmm, I wonder if I have a drinking problem. I wonder if I'm overweight. I want, I, in extreme cases, somebody isn't overweight and they think they are. But I'm saying, if you think you have a problem with alcohol or weed or whatever you might be food, maybe you do. And maybe it's time to talk to someone. So understand and recognize that you have a problem and then get help, reach out. Um, and I really think that whatever your issue is, it's great to work with someone that's an expert in that area. Because, you know, if your thing is weight loss, why are you going to go to a doctor who specializes in cancer? You know, if you think it, it, you really need to, if you have cancer, you need to go to a cancer doctor. I think if you have anxiety and depression, I think it's great to go to someone who specializes in anxiety and depression. So Google it, you know, go online. Those people do exist because the best way to treat an anxiety disorder, even if it's biochemical, even if, and by that we mean you may be someone who's genetically prone to releasing stimulants in your body, sodium lactate, um, cortisol, adrenaline. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means that when you get on a plane, you may, all, you may have something I call anticipatory anxiety. So before you even get on the plane, you're going, oh my gosh, what if there's turbulence? What if I get anxious on the flight? What if I can't sit still? Well, you've already released sodium lactate, adrenaline, and cortisol because you've scared yourself. 
it's the same thing, you know, if it's driving or if it's getting up to speak in front of people or going out on a date. If you sit there and start what if thinking, what I like to do is, is, is say to these people, if you're an anxious personality type, yes, it may be a genetic predisposition, but you're also highly intelligent. You have a very, very vivid imagination. You're a creative thinker. You're a forward thinker. You're usually thinking you're anticipating the future. You're very, very, um, you know, very, and you dissect everything. You need answers to things. And these aren't bad personality traits. In fact, if you could use these traits and put them outside of yourself, you know, you could become a lawyer, a doctor, go back to school, be a great mom. But people with anxiety tend to internalize these traits turn them on themselves and say, "Uh uh-oh, what's wrong with me? Why is my heart pounding so fast? Why do I feel so nervous right now? How am I going to get through this social situation? What if there's turbulence on this flight? What if this person doesn't like me? What if I don't meet my quota at work? Can you hear when I do that, how anxious you're setting yourself up for? Yeah, you're really stacking yourself emotionally like a load of bricks on your shoulders. So let me ask you a question. So we know that the first part of the solution is just to have the awareness that you know, you're not necessarily going crazy, but you have something that needs you know, time and attention. So that's the number one step is to to really acknowledge that the other part of it is the good news is that this can change. So one, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, you know, that I really do think is part of the solution is how do people let go of the blame game? You know, so maybe your mother was this, maybe your father was this, you know, maybe there was a history of alcohol in your family, et cetera, et cetera. You got a lot of pressure to be the superstar of the family. And so again, that belongs to them. That doesn't belong to you. But I also am seeing a lot of people that really are trying to understand, you know, just because my mother did this or my father did this, it doesn't mean that I have to replicate that. And it's like, oh my gosh, the light bulb went on. I don't have to be my parent. I don't have to carry on, you know, the dance of dysfunction in my family. So is that more of a first step than the awareness that, you know, I got to take care of myself? How does the blame game really help in all I of this? Think that's, that's, I think that's a, a really great point. I think that it's so easy to blame someone else for your problems because then you don't have to fix them. But the truth is, until you take responsibility for your problems, you won't be able to fix them. Because your father, whatever he was, is never going to fix you. You have to fix yourself. And so, um, but it is something I do believe you have to be taught. I think there's a skill set that comes with learning. Because in when you're recovering from an anxiety, anxiety is a learned behavior. I and mean, there's so much I want to talk about in a short period of time. But Anxiety and depression is often biochemical, okay, but it's also a learned behavior. It's environmental. So as you just said, very often you grew up in a family that's anxious, so you, you experience depression firsthand from your father, and you learn how to react and respond to things with anger or with anxiety or with worry. And so you have to relearn how to think differently, and instead of living reactively, you have to learn, live proactively, which means you, one of the most effective things you can do, I call it a 10 second to 24 hour timeout. It's where you step back and you say, okay, this is a situation that I would normally overreact to and I would overthink and I would maybe get anxious or angry. And instead I'm going to step back and take a 10 second to 24 hour timeout. And I want to react in a way that's going to be healthy and good for me and good for everybody around me. And that's a choice that you make in a split second. And that's a skill that needs to be learned, unfortunately, but it's very, very learnable. But what I was going to say is the good news about anxiety disorder, it's one of the easiest disorders to treat if you treat it the right way. But it's like, it's like anything else. If I said, Johanna, would you come with me to Paris? Um, I'm going to be doing a seminar on anxiety, and would you be my translator and speak fluent French? I'll give you $10,000. What would you say? I'd say yes. <laughs> I would say yes, you would, even though you. my French is limited. <laughs> so you asked me to write a question, you, but, I'm giving you a real that's answer. Good. But the average see, that's person, they really have to think about that, I think. Well, the average person would say, gee, I'd love the money, but I don't speak French. And, and, uh-huh. and I would say, well, why don't you speak French? And they'd say, because I've never studied French. I, I would say, well, it's like you couldn't sit down and play Beethoven right now on my piano if I said I'll give you $5,000 to play Beethoven. If you've never studied the piano, how is it you think 
that you can overcome something as debilitating and something that you've taken 25 years to learn how to get really good at, something like anxiety without any skill set. And, and that's, why, that, that's why people flounder around like fish and run for the caffeine and the alcohol and, you know, the religion, wherever they can find, because no one ever sat down with them and said, well, you were, you were just going there. Okay, A, you know, take responsibility for this. B, recognize the anxiety and depression. C, understand that it's probably genetic. Look at your mom, your dad, your grandma. Did any of them have it? D, now how can you learn to be a proactive person and an underreactor instead of an overreactor? And, and E, you know, what steps can you take right now so that you're not, so you're not a negative person. In fact, you're, you know, a proactive, positive person so that you can calm yourself down in any situation. And E, F, how can you get more comfortable with being in the moment, being comfortable with yourself no matter what, so that you don't have to run for your phone or the computer or, you know, a glass of wine? How can you, what can you do to start getting comfortable with living in the moment? Because that is probably, probably one of the hardest things for people in 2016 to do, uh, to do Johanna, is to set with themselves in the moment and really just be okay with no So one of my things that I really like to work with my clients on, very similar path, is how do you go from, you know, living in that external world and unplugging from that and plugging into your soul? So I know you work well enough to know that that quiet time and that introspection time, and it's not necessarily psychoanalyzing yourself, it's just getting quiet. You know, we're not used to that. We are not used to just being quiet. So one of the things that I'd like to add to your solution, which I know you already talk about, is, you know, are you spending any time, you know, unplugging from all the electronics and just being out in nature, whether it's going to the beach and or just going out in your backyard and, and leaning against a tree? How are you connecting to the soul? So in terms of that soulful approach, for those of you that are listening that you want to, you know, get to that place, you already recognize that there's a situation here that you want to overcome. What's the next step? How do I unplug from the world and really plug into my soul? And like Lucinda says, by recognizing that it's something that you can do. I mean, that's a very, very positive thing. So, you know, I know that you've got um, lots of information to share with us in our in a few minutes about, you know, what you do. I just want to remind everybody that's listening, this is Dialogue with Divinity. We're talking with Lucinda Bassett and her, her book, which is phenomenal, is called From Panic to Power. So we're going to be right back in a few minutes and talk more about her book, her coaching program, and what else she has to offer you. So please don't go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exome Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, High Tech with Corey Kay, and every minute of the 24-7, 365 programming of the Exome Broadcast Network by calling 712-432-9459, courtesy of TalkStream Live. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 712-432-9459 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 712-432-9459 for the best of paranormal, new age, thought-provoking, sci-fi radio programming 24-7, 365. Coming soon to the Exxon Broadcast Network is a different perspective with me, Kevin Randall, as your host. 
We'll be taking a close look at what is happening in the world of UFOs today with side trips into the paranormal. Guests will range from those who are household names to those who have a different perspective on a variety of topics. No topic will be taboo, but there will be tough questions asked as we all search for the truth about UFOs, the paranormal, and those things that excite us. Sometimes we'll agree with a guest and sometimes we won't, but we'll try to keep the program topical. For those of you who would like to read, be sure to visit www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com and remember to listen to the other fine programs on the X-Zone Broadcast Network at www.xzbn.net. This is Kevin Randall. For nearly 30 years, I have been investigating the case of the Roswell UFO. I have interviewed hundreds of people and stood on the crash site. Now in Roswell in the 21st century, I have reviewed dozens of hours of audio and videotaped interviews, examined hundreds of files that relate to the crash, and have returned to Roswell in an attempt to put all that information into the proper perspective. For the first time in Roswell in the 21st century, I have made a dispassionate reevaluation of all that material and provide a new look at what happened. This is a book that clears away all the clutter that has hidden the truth for so long, strips away the various lies that surround the case, exposes the Air Force attempts at cover-up, and found a core of solid information that tells us all where the case stands today. Roswell in the 21st Century will be available in just a few weeks. For more information, please visit my website at www.kevinrandall.blogspot.com. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genex provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life is no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. Okay, everybody, here we are back with Lucinda Bassett, our our dream queen of, <laughs> of depression, who's oh, going to move you into an area of, of a lot of solutions. <laughs> so we want to leave you on a high note filled with a lot of light. So Lucinda, first of all, I know you've got multiple books, but From Panic to Power, I mean, it's, to me, it's like the Bible for anybody who's, who's really reaching out for help, right? And they can find this book on Amazon.com. Right. Yep. And right. so, yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Besides your book and other books, by the way, she's got great information. And your website is how would people get in touch with uh, you? Directly? If you just go, the easiest thing is lucindahelps.com. It's all one lucindahelps, H E L P S dot com, will take you to my website. And, um, and there I offer, um, I have coaching, and actually, the program that I use is called The Solution, which is a book I wrote. And, right. um, 
and it's a four, yeah, and uh, you keep saying, what's the solution? <laughs> what's the solution? And um, Your program so is the solution. Four week coaching program, <laughs> right. I mean, it's an option. I, I really um, love what I do, and one of the things I do, if you do go to lucindahelps.com, is I'm offering a free 10-minute um, call with me to see if wow. it's something that you're interested in and if you fit and if you feel like you're a candidate and if I feel like you're a candidate. So it's kind That's of That's very generous. So, so you're you looking website, to see if you're a match. Yeah. That's wonderful. So you've right. got um, right. multiple books and From Panic to Power. You've got your four-week co right. week coaching program. And she is generously mm -hmm. offering you a 10-minute free call to see if you guys are a match. So in terms of, you know, we kind of started out with heal or heal thyself. And I, I really feel that I want to honor you that this is a mission. Don't you think that this is a mission to, to, to really help all these kind of lost souls on the earth right now. And, you know, you see yourself going at it for a long time here or coming up with, you know, <laughs> new salute, new solutions. I think that the world keeps changing, and I think that there is as much stress and anxiety now as there has ever been before, and I, I think people absolutely need guidance, and they need people like you and I to help them calm down and slow down and understand that they are self-sabotaging, and people just don't know uh, how to stop. They don't, because they, again, they, there's no roadmap for that. There's no... You know, we, unfortunately, they should have been given one in high school and they weren't. And so we get thrown into these high stress jobs. We get thrown into being mothers and fathers and, uh, you know, spouses. And, and, and there's so much information just when you think there can't be any more. Now this whole artificial intelligence thing's coming out. You know, you, I mean, you wait and see where the world's at 10 years from now. It will be even more intense. And I want to use that word intense because that's what it is. And I, I think it's, it's our job, you and I, and people like us. And I, I feel very blessed to do what I do. Um, I love what I do. I love that I can sit in an hour, help someone really think through what they're doing to themselves and help turn that energy around. And, and I, I think the good news is there's such great help out there today. Whereas 20 years ago, looking for help, going for help was considered taboo. And mm -hmm. now, you know, it's a good thing to go look for help. In fact, it's the right thing. It's the mature thing. It's a healthy thing. And there's a lot of great help out there. I also think that if people can really stop comparing themselves, you know, to kind of go back to that whole social media thing that we were talking about. First of all, let's do a reality check, people. Not everybody's going to Paris for five months. You right. know, <laughs> not everybody right. is driving, you know, a Ferrari. I mean, you know, there's a lot of storytelling on social media. I'm not saying that people are being That's liars. Right. I am saying, you know, there's a lot of maybe blowing things out of proportion. And maybe people need to do that to convince themselves on some level that there is value and quality to their life. So here's the thing. Part of the solution is to understand that you've got to take ownership. You know, Rob was saying a, a few minutes ago, to thine own self be true. You've got to be true to yourself. Yeah. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Um, as far as anything that you should be reading, if you're if you have any trepidation at all about, you know, getting help and it's a no-no, start reading from panic to power. Consider it to be your new go-to book. Take a highlighter. Highlight the heck out of this thing. You can even highlight on Kindle these days, which is amazing to me. So the four-week coaching yeah. program, you know, do people like they work with you at a clip of four weeks and they come back and work for another four weeks? I mean, what, what do you really accomplish in that first four weeks? I think that would be helpful. You know, what I'm, my, my new uh, style is very much about setting your intentions, and I'm, I put it on a time frame. Like, what is your intention for the, the coming year? What do you really want to do? Let's set your intentions. So that's creating a roadmap for people. And then I teach them how to live in a very deliberate way so that whatever they're doing is going to help them get to their intentions rather than, you know, diverting them into an unhealthy place. So in the first four weeks, it's really about understanding why someone is an anxious personality, why they are who they are, how they got there. And then the, 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 the last three weeks are to help them create a roadmap of intentions of where they want to be at the end of the four sessions. Most people honestly sign up for four more. Yeah, <laughs> that's what of, I was, I was, you know, goes it's like, there. okay, I've got my roadmap. <laughs> now I need you to help me drive the car. You know? So well, and I'll I tell you something that, else. It's just, you know, 
people get excited and motivated when they work with people like us. So they hang up the phone and they feel like, wow, I, they have a better day. And that's kind of cool about what we do, you know. It is. And you know what I think if someone would say to me, you know, what is it that you're really selling? It's hope. And I think, you know, it's yeah, hope that, that's you know, life really can be different and I can dial it down. I can calm down. I can learn to go within, even if it's for one minute a day. I know when I was in corporate America, one of the things that I did was, I, you know, I kept saying, why the heck am I here? You know, and then in retrospect, many years later, I realized that there there was a divine plan around all of it. But I used to go into the ladies' room and I would just close the stall for a few minutes and I would just close my eyes and breathe, you know. And I would say, don't own this. This doesn't belong to you. This is not yours, you know. And even though it was like a quick moment and go back into the office, I just felt like there was a new me, you know. There was a new me that showed up. And here's the other part. I never felt that I was walking back into that office alone. Because I do believe in the power of prayer, yeah. and I do believe in the divine, and I do do believe for all of you that are listening that you are you're not out there alone. Yes, there's people like myself and Lucinda and many other people who are really dedicated to helping people move through life with grace and ease. And so, you know, if you are in a particular religion and there's a saint or someone that's valuable to you, or if you had a relative that died that you love, you know, ask them to walk into that office with you every day. I mean, there's a lot of hypocrisy in the world right now, and there is a lot of stress. There's a lot of pressure to go, 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 and do, 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 do. And, I, you know, Lucinda, I read an article that said we process as much information in one day as our grandparents did in their entire lifetime. I mean, that just blows me away. Oh, wow. Talk about the information well, age. I, I haven't, yeah, yeah, I have not heard that. That's pretty, uh, it's almost, you know, like, really? That's pretty crazy. Uh, but well, think I of tech, I mean, my, you know, the computer the for us and all yeah. this technology stuff, you know, is, you know, it's when did it really start happening the last, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So I look at my grandparents, you know, who died, you know, many, 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 many years ago. And I can't imagine how they would have handled something like this. And then I look at all of the new inventions and the things that they experience and multiply it times a thousand. So now I've got to take that yeah. mental information and file it away. And how do I not have that as you say it, this emotional reaction, I call it the karmic kick in the butt. How do I not have this karmic kick like, oh, I've got to go back in there and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And, you know, um, a lot of my corporate clients, I was one of them, always had a briefcase full of stuff, came home at night. So the office really never closed. And so another thing well, that I think that people can really do is give yourself permission to close your office door. You know, what does that mean? Mm -hmm in terms of another form of a solution. So we are definitely going to have you back again, because I feel that we've just scratched the surface here of how we can really <laughs> we have. illuminate a lot of people for a, a better day and a, and a better way. So I really and truly want to thank you. I'm going to chat a little bit about some of the things that I'm doing and we're offering here. So again, pan from Panic to Power, Go to her website, Lucinda Helps, that's H-E-L-P-S dot com, Lucinda Bassett, and make sure you sign up for that 10-minute free call. You know, she's giving you a real gem here. This uh -huh. is a real jewel, and we appreciate all the jewels that you shared with us today, Lucinda. So I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, and I'm sending your heart a really big hug. Okay, Thanks, so for everybody Thanks for having out there, me. It was a pleasure. It's been a, been a pleasure. We'll see you soon. So... I wanted to share with everyone that's listening also, my latest book is called The Lost Art of Loving. And I want to tell you why I wrote this book, because I realized that emotionally, what we absorb in our cells and our body and our mind and our spirit really affects everything that's going on in our life. So we're told that spiritually, this is sort of a metaphysical teaching here, that the earth is the only planet of emotion. It's the only planet of emotion. And this is why sometimes there's a lot of UFO curiosity about what are these crazy human beings doing anyway. So going back to The Lost Art of Loving, which you will find on Amazon.com, 
I decided, how can I really help people get to that place of of self-care and self-love and serving their soul? So the book, filled with lots of gems for you, and I hope that you'll take a look at that. And also, I will see you next time. This is Dialogue with Divinity. This is Johanna Carroll, and I'm sending you a big heart hug. Bye for now. Thank you.